welcome back AutoCAD students and in this tutorial I'm going to give you some guidance and a review of a few commands to help you with the cabin drawing assignment that we have for this week. Alright so on the screen is the completed assignment and I just want to remind you that you will find this assignment if we go to Moodle and you look at assignment 9 uh, we have the assignment right here and it's also if you're looking for the dimensions um, of the cabin they are also in your book here on page 29-18 okay I want you to notice here at the top of the page it tells you the dimension scale it tells you the, wa uh, the width of the walls and it also tells you some information about the space behind the door being four inches and the counter is 24 inches deep. Okay, uh, there is an additional PDF handout, the next one down. This PDF handout is also in your book on page 29-17 and this is where you're going to find the information for the door and the window. Okay. Uh, coming down to the next handout in Moodle, if you click on layers for the cabin, uh, these are the layers that you will need to create for the cabin drawing. And the last PDF handout is what your cabin should look like when it's completed in the viewport at a quarter inch scale equals a foot. Alrighty, so what you're going to start off with when you're in Moodle is you will be downloading this startup file called One Cabin Startup. And when you do that, uh, when you open it in AutoCAD, it's going to look something like this. Okay, you guys are very familiar with these startup files. Uh, there is a title block down here in the layout tab ready for you. Okay, I'm going to go back to model space and the like I said you'll have to create some layers alright so I'm gonna come back over to this drawing tab and I'm gonna come into model space and one of the things that um, I wanna go over as a reminder is that when you're actually drawing the walls after you've created the layers uh, and you're drawing the walls please remember that uh, you want to be on the correct layer or eventually get your stuff onto the correct layer and when you do draw uh, lines or anything you're gonna have to remember that you're in architectural units so for instance here if I'm going to start drawing this cabin to the left here of the finished cabin um, I'm drawing a line and I'm gonna go 16 feet you'll need the apostrophe to tell the computer that you want feet and not inches okay so we'll go 20 feet and again I'll go over 16 feet okay and then at this point using the handout and or you could look at the finished drawing from Moodle you will offset and trim and get the walls into place okay here I have the walls drawn and everything is trimmed out and I've also drawn the window so at this point I just need to copy the window into place so I'm gonna actually grip the window I'm gonna right click and pick copy selection and for my base point I'm going to pick this upper left corner and I'm gonna remove ortho there we go and you can see I can just match it up with the corner of the cabin right there and one down here okay now to get the window into this position I need to rotate this window so I'm actually gonna grip the window and I'm gonna right click and pick rotate and the command is asking me for a base point so I'm going to pick a point in the upper left corner 
And now if I want to rotate it a positive 90, I would go this way, and negative 90 is this direction. Uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter because I do want the window to be vertical. So I'm just going to type in 90. Now I'm ready to copy the window into place in the vertical position. The next thing I want to show you is how to use the arc command to draw a door, whether the door is um, swinging open to the left or to the right, we're going to use the arc command. All right, so I'm going to come up to the menu up here, the draw panel, and I like the arc that says center, start, end. Center point, start of arc, end of arc. Okay. So if we come down here, this would be the center point of the arc, it would be at the beginning of the door. So you think of that as the center of a circle, it's the center of the arc. So that would be my first pick. My second pick is starting the arc, that would be here. And my last pick is over here, okay? So that's center, start, end. Now let's try it on this one here. So I'm going to go center, start, and when I try to come over this way, notice that the arc doesn't want to draw in the opposite direction. So what I can do is I can hold the control key down, and when I hold the control key down and pick, I'm able to reverse the direction that the arc is drawn. I noticed here I have a little bit of an error in the placement of my door. So instead of erasing the door and drawing it over, I'm just going to move it because it looks like my error is the same uh, distance in each direction. So I'm going to grip the door. I'm going to right click and pick move. I'm going to use this as my base point and this end point as my second point and now the door lines up perfectly. All right, I'm about to put in the countertop, so I'm going to offset the wall uh, two feet, which is 24 inches. So I'm gonna offset this line and this line. And so now I just need to join these two, and I wanna show you a trick here that I like to do. Uh, I'm going to go up to the fillet command, and once I'm in the fillet command, I'm going to pick on radius, and I'm going to set the radius to zero. And after I do that, I'm going to pick this line and this line, and notice it makes a perfect corner. Uh, this is also something you can do when you are actually constructing the walls. It's a nice way to get any two lines to trim to a corner. Okay, so let me just show you that one more time. I'll actually just for, for time's sake draw a quick line here. Now if I want to corner that, the fillet command is already set to zero, so I don't have to do anything but pick those two lines and notice it corners it nicely. Time to put in the room labels, okay? So for instance over here we have bedroom, kitchen, vanity, bath, and office. All right, so I'm going to set my layer to text room label, make that current, and I'm going to come up here to multi-line text, and I'm going to make a window over here, and I'm going to just start typing bedroom. Okay, immediately we can see that I have a problem here with the scale. So I'm actually not going to use this piece of text. I'm going to erase it. And I'm going to come down here to my scaler and change my scale to a quarter inch equals a foot. Okay, so now with this scaler at a quarter inch equals a foot, I'm going to try this again. All right, and now all I have to do with this is go to the copy command either on the ribbon or you can right click and then just double click each one 
and edit the text. All right, now it's time to hatch the walls. Uh, this is the fun part. So I'm actually going to make the layer, uh, where is it, hatch wall current. Okay, come over to the hatch command. And of course I want a solid hatch. And I like my hatches to be separate, so this is highlighted. I like that. That way each hatch is its own separate entity. And I'm just going to go to pick point and just go around and pick inside the cabin walls. Now for dimensioning, I'm going to show you dimension linear and dimension continue to make dimensioning this cabin really quick. All right, so first I'm going to start with a linear dimension. One, two, three picks. Notice this was number two pick because that will be the extension line dimension continue starts from. So now I'm going to type in DIM C O N T and then it's just a single pick right down the line for each dimension. Okay? The dimension continue command can also be found on the annotate ribbon and right here is dimension continue if you don't want to type in D-I-M-C-O-N-T. I'm going to add a leader next. Uh, notice over here I have a leader that calls out the dimension of the countertop. So I'm going to come over here to leader and I need to specify a point on the countertop. Now I can use this midpoint or I can type in NEA, enter for nearest, and see how nearest gives me any point on a line anywhere. So that's where the arrowhead will be. Second pick is where the text will be. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grip this dimension and put the 6 down here. All right, now all I have to do is get this into a layout tab, scale it, and print it to PDF. So I'm going to come down here to the first layout tab. And if I double click inside the viewport, it's going to show me that the scale is 1 quarter inch equals a foot and that's correct, you may need to adjust yours. All right, I'm gonna double click outside the viewport so that I'm now in paper space. Once in paper space, you can double click on the title block and edit the attributes in your title block accordingly. Now I'm going to come down to the layout tab one and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to plot. And here I have most of my settings set for the drawing to print to PDF. I have the paper size here, I'm printing a layout. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to pick ACAD LT.CTB for my pen file. This will make the drawing print in color. Uh, yours may just say acad.ctb. Uh, I'm using AutoCAD Lite, so that's why it has the LT right there. Uh, but this will make the drawing print in color. So let's do a preview. Okay, that looks good. All right, now before I send this off to print, if your preview, uh, let me go back to preview here. If your preview is showing that the margins are being cut off, uh, either on the right, left, or the top, and you're noticing that it's hard to get the drawing uh, not to cut off the margins, I'm going to be doing another tutorial to show you how to fix that problem. Uh, but for now, I'm going to finish this one out with printing to PDF, so I'm just going to pick OK and I'm going to save it in here. You can rename it if you want. All right, now in my computer it automatically opens in Adobe Acrobat 
so it automatically does that. Um, if yours does not automatically open, you may need to go to File Explorer and um, open it from there into whatever program you have that opens a PDF. Uh, but here it is, here's the file, and this would be, in addition to the drawing file, what you would need to upload to Moodle when you have everything completed.